Welcome and, and thank you for joining us. Today we want to share with you the challenges and strategies employed at Bibb County Schools located in Macon, Georgia. Now, uh, Dr. Lori Rogers is the Executive Director of Special Programs there, and, and she has a little recording here that will help you understand how this program came to be. Oops. Sorry. In February of 2012, the United States Department of Education approved the Georgia Department of Education of a flexibility waiver of some of the requirements of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965. The flexibility waiver has allowed Georgia to design an alternative supplemental education program called Flexible Learning Program. The FLP program is tailored to the needs of academically at-risk students in schools that have been designated as priority and focus. Priority schools are schools that are the lowest 5% of Title I schools as it relates to student achievement. Focus schools are schools with the largest academic gaps between the highest achieving subgroup and the lowest achieving subgroup. Now these Bibb County students were not unlike those of many schools, perhaps even yours. Many students had mass skill gaps at least one full grade level below their current grade, with a surprising number having gaps two, three, four, or even more levels below their actual grade. And within a given level, each of these students is unique with individual skill gaps. Um, here you see the functional grade levels of those Bibb County students prior to the FLA, FLP program. You can see here in sixth grade, um, more than half of them had at least one mass skill gap in the first grade level. In the seventh grade, you see nearly three quarters with one or more in level two. In the eighth grade, still many with gaps in level two, level four, level five, and the others in level seven. Now, how can any teacher address the unique situation here? Well, to explain that today, I have with me some help. I'm delighted to introduce uh, some special guests with us today. First of all, from Bibb County Schools, Joanna Gittin Sumro, Title I Education Specialist. Now, she has worked with the FL program these past two years. Joining her is Virginia Stoner from Educational Learning Systems, who provided guidance throughout the implementation. Welcome, Joanna. Welcome, Virginia. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. I wonder now if I can get you to explain a little bit more of, of how this FLP was set up, um, of what the students were expected to do in the program. First of all, it was a blended learning program that you chose. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, this county decided to look at the data to determine what subject was most needed for remediation and in our district it was math. So we decided to do a blended learning format and we sought out educational learning systems to help us with implementing this remediation program. And I just really um, appreciate the partnership that we have with ELS. But in addition to having such a great partnership, we selected Ascend Math to help remediate those most at-risk students in our district. The, the classroom was set up with a ratio of 10, so there, there were 10 students in each grade period. And then we gave a pretext to determine what um, was the course of action of remediation for our students. So Jane, would you like to add anything? Well, I just think that this has been a great part working with the team here in Bibb County. Joanna has been a wonderful leader for this particular implementation. And our challenge was, was to serve those needs of the students who had the absolute most needs, which included a lot of special needs students. So we wanted it not to be something where the students were just working on the computer, but instead, there was a activity involving teacher-directed uh, lessons as well. So 
we really helped design the format so that it would be blended using the technology as a tool, but also having the teachers greatly involved in the learning activities of the students. So the students were moving from teacher-led instruction to collaborative activities and uh, then um, in Ascend Math working on their individual skill gaps, is that correct? Yes. And uh, they were working uh, 90 minutes a week in Ascend Math? Normally it was 90 minutes if it was on an A-B schedule, which means the students would have been in class either Monday and Wednesday or another week could have been Tuesday, Thursday. Ah. So, um, and then Friday, every other Friday with those, with those groups. So usually if it was a 90 minute block, it was really more two days or three days a week with an AB schedule. If it was a um, 60 minute block or 55 minute block, then they would meet every day. So it Excellent. Was cool. Well, let me show you all briefly a little bit of how Ascend Math works and what they were doing it. First, every student in Ascend takes a level recommendation test. Uh, this is an adaptive assessment that adjusts to each individual student. That is how their functional grade levels was found. The test increases or decreases difficulty based upon the student's responses. Each test is unique, just as each student is unique. The result is that the Bibb County educators know where students should begin instruction. Now, when a student first logs in to ascend, there are no lessons in his plan. The student takes a short pre-assessment built around like objectives, allowing him to show what he does know. And his lesson plan, of course, fills with the objectives he does not know. The student then begins the first lesson, Completing the interactive instruction and activities, the student takes a post-assessment. Passing the assessment, the student moves on to the next lesson in his plan. Now, when the lessons are completed, the student will again take a brief pre-assessment, building his lesson plan to the next stage. Now, let me show you a, a closer look at what the student sees and how the student works in here. Uh, I'm going to choose concept to perimeter because I haven't seen that one in a while. Um, this is where the student comes in um, and sees um, exactly where they're at. This is how the student tracks their own work. David Fox here, he's completed zero of five objectives in this unit, elementary multiplication, and he's already completed units on whole numbers and elementary addition and subtraction. Remember, he's only working on what he does not know. And uh, they're going to begin the same every time, just start the lesson, and they're going to follow this path one through five, first opening a stud study guide, which is also available in Spanish, and print that out, or if um, it is already pre-printed in the classroom, go and get that pre-printed study guide. Then um, watch the instructional video and work the During problems lesson, along the with the instructor. Find area and perimeter using an area model. For this exercise, we'll use a tiling strategy. Now, they're all Maria very short, six, seven, eight minutes. Some are a bit longer in algebra and such. And you see right away, we're engaging the student. Um, they have to be paying attention because they're going to be asked questions and the video won't move forward. How many rectangles do you see on the bottom? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rectangles. There will uh, be Rectangle several of these at key points throughout bottom, every one of the instruction videos. The side. And the student can what pause it, replay it rectangle? as often as need be. We will answer these questions Once the study guide's been strategy. completed and, and tiling, he's gone through the entire the video, he can move on to an exploration. There's one of these for every objective that the Bibb County students encounter. And that is to help them understand the objective in another way. If that didn't do it, then perhaps this will. Let's see if I'm bright enough to do it. Now, don't laugh at me, Joanna. Try to make the area 25. Okay, it's area. And part of this is area and perimeter. So I'll drag it up to five and five and I've got area 25. Ooh, try to make the perimeter 40. Now it's the perimeter. Nope, that's area. Okay. Oh, I see what's going to happen. I'm going to have to open it up all the way. And we just drag it <clears throat> all the way. And when we've completed that, 
um, we can move on to a practice test. Now, um, I don't know the answers here, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick something to show you that here we have multiple levels of assistance as well. Not only show the answer, but if the student still doesn't understand, there is yet more content here. There is often a solution video right down to this one particular Yolanda problem. Yolanda is building an area model that is eight tiles across and four tiles down. Draw Yolanda's area model. So we need a rectangle right. that's eight tiles across and four tiles down. We have our now, only now will the post-assessment unlock. The student takes the post-assessment, once passing it, moves on to that very next objective in line automatically, and once they're done with those, then of course the student will go back and take another uh, pre-assessment. Oops, wrong one. Beg your pardon. Why don't we just go down to where we want to be? If you beg my pardon. And uh, now I, I, I'm going to um, take you to another video. Um, and I want to you listen to Dr. Sharon Daniel. Now, she was the instructor, has been the instructor of the FLP program there, and Stephen Jones, because uh, we already determined that these students were working 90 minutes. We recommend 60 to 90 minutes a week on their individual skill gaps to get them to catch up quickly. Um, but how much time will it take a teacher? That's a very important question. This is our student dashboard. Our student dashboard gives you a glimpse at how long students have been working on the computers, the levels they're completing, the hours that have been done by each grade level, and it just makes life much easier for me. So as that data is compiled, we will continue to uh, make sure that there's true collaboration among the flexible learning program teacher as well as the regular uh, math teacher or content area specialist. Now this is the teacher dashboard that Dr. Daniel was speaking of. Um, this comes on every time she logs into Ascend Math. Uh, you could see she has here all the key data for her classes, including the number of levels completed, objectives completed, how many enrolled students, the total hours they've worked. Now, when she wants to look at any individual classroom, she just clicks on that, and that will go to the class dashboard. Now, uh, this provides an at-a-glance look at the classroom as a whole and the progress that students have made uh, the last week um, since the beginning. Um, also, you can see here all the different levels that these students in her class are working on and how many levels they have completed over here. Um, now, when she wants to know what's happening right now, though, um, this is our latest change. She will go into the live student tracker. This is fairly new, and it has been very positively um, um, referenced by teachers. So uh, it provides the real-time data. Now, with this tool and the two dashboards, it takes only minutes each week for teachers to stay on top of what each of their students are doing in their individual study plans and what they should do next. You can see here, for example, each student listed out with the level, the unit, um, the objective working on, how many attempts at the post-assessment they've made so far, knowing whether they need to intervene, and that is neatly color-coded, as you can see, and the next objective that that student will need to take on. Now, administrators also have a dashboard, like Principal Jones, who just met. Um, this gives them quick access, access to their most critical data as well. Um, it is through these dashboards and the other easy reporting in Ascend Math that Dr. Daniel and other teachers can manage a whole classroom full of students working at different levels on different skill gaps and moving along at their own pace. Um, I want to look at results next, and I'm going to ask for, once again, Joanna and Virginia's help here. Now, um, these are the year one results, and um, these were obtained at Howard Middle School in Bibb uh, County Schools. Um, could you explain a little bit about the results here and, and what you saw happen that first year? So at the beginning of the school year, we had about 58% of students that tested below fourth grade um, math, fourth grade level in math. 
by the end of April. Look at that. This is phenomenal. Only 15% remain, remained at that fourth grade level. 9% um, of our students tested at five, the fifth grade and above at the start of the year. But by April, that number increased to 64%. We had about two or more grade levels of that was demonstrated with 44% of our students to use an ascent. And on the average, we did like 1.5 hours, which we were talking about previously. Right. Nine minutes. So these are really great gains that we saw with year one with our students at Howard. From students that really struggled mightily before, correct? And, and, and let me stress this. For our flexible learning program, we identify the lowest of the low students. Those students who are really struggling in math, um, are not meeting uh, proficiency with our Georgia milestones, just students that are really struggling and they have a distinct taste for math. And so Ascend helps build that child's self-esteem, gives them the skills that they need to be a better mathematician. And we're just really proud of the success that we saw with uh, year one. Yeah, these are really great results. And, and because of it, where did you take the program next? So because of these phenomenal results, uh, we decided to take this program to another school. Um, that was Ballard Hudson Middle. And as you can see here, 80% uh, of our students gained one or more grade levels. So look in September, we uh, could see that we, the, the levels when we started out with level two compared to the progress that was being made with our students. 41% uh, gained three grade levels and 18% gained four grade levels. So that was like, um, Virginia, would you say on average about 20.9 objectives that were completed per week? Yes, which is phenomenal given that these students were uh, a sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, and they were functioning down at the second, third grade level for the most part when they entered the program. So, uh, for students who are that far behind in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade to make those kind of gains in one year. Thank you all very much for joining us. Thank you again, Joanna. Um, uh, we can't wait to see what's next in Bibb County. It's just been a joy to, to see the, the incredible results that you've been able to achieve there. Um, you and, and Dr. Daniel, and Dr. Rogers, and, and all the others. And uh, thank you, Virginia, for joining us and for your hard work and um, helping them out with their implementation and guiding them. Well, Mike, it's been a pleasure working with you and with the educational learning system. Um, I would say that this has been a perfect marriage. Um, we could not have done the great work that we did without the, our partner. And at the end of the day, when a child says to you, thank you for allowing me to partake in this program, and I am a better student, I, it, it brings tears to my eyes to think that all the hard work that we have done was well worth it. What a wonderful way to wrap up this webinar. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us.